Hello, Namaste. This is Sapina. Welcome to my channel. And in this video, I am talking about 10 unique points about Buddha's teachings, right? Uh, and these are some of the some of these points have motivated me to follow Buddhism and follow Buddha's teachings in my daily life. So I am covering those points. So the first point is that a middle way, right? So Buddha in his six years that he, uh, uh, you know, after his renouncing the worldly life that he was uh, traveling in the forests and searching for a way how to get free from suffering, he consulted various teachers, he did various practices and some of the practices uh, were like, uh, uh, you know, giving uh, kind of extreme, uh, uh, you know, kind of suffering to the body, right, self-mortification. He did all that and when he finally got enlightened under the Bodhi tree, he realized uh, in his meditation during his enlightenment that there has to be a middle path, right? So Buddha said, in Buddha's teachings, he says that follow a middle path. Don't go too much into uh, the sense pleasures, right? Uh, they, that will be an obstruction. And go. don't go too much into asceticism or self uh, uh, self mortification, right? Uh, not eating, fasting, too much of that also don't do. Follow a middle path. So Buddha's teachings, if you see the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path, they are they constitute the middle path. So all of the people, which be may it be monks or you know may it be household people, can can follow that particular uh, middle path that are given that is given by the Buddha. So that was one thing in a unique point in his teachings. Second. In Buddha said that in, in Buddha there is no concept of you know you can still so this in Buddhism there is no uh, concept of God right I will discuss it in a separate video Buddha, Buddha said about mind about the impermanence the five aggregates right so maybe in his teaching to get free of suffering maybe God relying on a God worshiping a God did not have its place however I believe and I will come at a detailed video on this is that you can still believe in a God right and still follow Buddha's teachings I'll come to that but in here in his teachings there is nothing like that Buddha said that I am God and worship me and then I will give you I will save you there is no system of like you know salvation by like uh, you know there is a God who you know who saves you Buddha's teaching was that your karmas right what you do will generate a reaction if this, then that, right? So Buddha was like a, a kind of, I will say, scientist or a doctor. He says, if you do this, then this will be the result. I am only showing you the way. You have to do it in your daily life. I I cannot do it for you. It's not that you worship me and I will give you some some grace and that grace will wipe away all the karmas. There was nothing like that. So so in, in short, if I understand his teachings, is that there's no shortcut to bypassing your karma. So you do bad karma. Right. And I see many people do that. You know, they do bad karma. They, you know, they create problems for others and then they go, go to God and do the rituals. And then they, they think that God will, if they do charity or do the rituals, God will say, no, Buddha's teachings was totally, you know, not uh, uh, like that. He said, you will get it as per your karma. So whatever you do, just take care. Whatever have, has happened till now, you cannot control that. But from now on, do the right karmas. Be more mindful of whatever is arising. All the five aggregates, how they arise in you. Right? So it's very, very different. Right? Uh, so not relying on an external deity or a god to, to save them. No. Make changes in your day-to-day -day karmas. Right? Don't bind yourself with new karmas. Right? Okay. No worship rituals. Right? This is again a unique. Buddha did not say anyone come I am God, worship me, right? Nothing like that. Now, in some traditions in Buddhism, they have the devotional aspect to Buddhism. And there are, in Buddhism, they have this concept of, you know, deities are there, who are like more, uh, you know, beings who are like bodhisattvas, who are very high on the path, right? So, there is definitely some devotional element that has come in, in some other traditions. But it is not a part of Buddha's original teachings. They have all come later on, with respect to every, the person's, you know, uh, uh, kind of what I will say is a com uh, competence level or person's inclination, he he can do the devotional aspect and do the rituals, but they are not there in Buddhism. Buddhism is totally free from all these, you know, rituals and, you know, 
because buddha said very clearly you know that you will have to do the right conduct develop your mind get the wisdom right and not get stuck in these worships and the rituals and all then no punishment judgment buddhism in there is no you know that if you do wrong things then you will get punishment somewhere some god will be there to judge you no buddhism in buddhism there is this five precepts right i will make a separate video on precepts five precepts no lying no stealing no sexual misconduct those precepts are there those precepts are not again like the 10 commandments in christianity that there you know god will punish or judge there is a judgment day that will happen no nothing like that. buddha said that these five things you should must take care because if you kill someone right the karmic impact of that killing will be so severe that you know it will come either in this life or in the coming lives it will generate its effects so buddha is like a teacher who says if you do this then this will happen he is just guiding you right okay there is no concept of punishment or judgment in buddhism then impermanence anicca right impermanence is buddha's teaching is everything is changing nothing is nothing is permanent our desire that thing to make things permanent in our mind that gives us suffering so buddha says that all these like five aggregates are there again i'll make separate video on five aggregates all these things body mind mental formations volitional activities consciousness is all changing it's like a fluid way it's happening nothing is permanent right so impermanence is one of the core teachings of uh, buddha right then suffering no one has no enlightened master has brought suffering uh, in that much clear clarity as buddha right so you know we at somewhere we are you know we are all in our you know we are wandering in the world and sense pleasures and everything but somewhere deep down everyone you me everyone realizes that there is suffering some or the other suffering is there in this life below all the happiness below all the you know chaka uh, chaund in hindi hindi there is a word all the glamour buddha brought it very clearly that life is suffering right that suffering exists why suffering because we of all our craving that we have towards things towards objects towards ideas towards people all our craving generates the suffering and that suffering binds us it keeps us bound to this cycle of existence right so this suffering is a very very key concept in uh, buddha's teachings then absence of a permanent self non self anatta this is again a very very core and fundamental teaching of uh, buddhism which is very different from the other teachings in buddhism there is no concept of a of a self a permanent self right the concept of permanent self gives suffering that creates craving that creates anxiety that creates fear buddha says there is no look deep into that like in a microscope you look deep and you see that even in a like a piece of iron there are like electrons protons they are all you know moving jumping around so look deep and you'll see that this body is like a body body mind mental formations volitional activities consciousness it's like a things which are arising and falling problem is i think of myself as abhinav as a separate self and then abhinav has his likes abhinav has his dislikes what if there is no abhinav there is only these things that are arising and falling in me then i just become a witness of all the you know the jumpings things that are happening and then you know my perspective which is called right view my perspective changes right so this is a non self again a unique teaching then buddha's teaching is all based upon direct experience buddha said don't you know think that you know rely on me don't there is a very good text maybe in another video i'll capture it buddha said don't rely on a particular teacher's teaching just because the teacher looks very enlightened very learned or the teachings teachings look nice no buddha says test them for yourself see if they form part of your direct experience then only you implement them check it test it then only which other i mean i don't know which other religions goes to such extent where the teacher asks ask the student to test the knowledge test the teacher also buddha said don't even rely on me test me also right so that was again a unique feature then universal potential then now buddha's teaching is open to anyone any caste any creed there is not that only some castes higher castes people can 
can gain uh, liberation other lower caste people can know buddha teachings was open to all people for, of all social status all religions buddha buddha teachings are open to all religions anyone who wants to practice anyone who is rich poor anyone all are open buddha said all of them have the seeds of the buddhahood buddhahood is what buddha is what awareness the quality of awareness everyone has even if you see a criminal the criminal also has the seed of the buddhahood in him if the he gets the right environment if he gets the right teachings that seed the biggest example of that is angulimal right angulimal who 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 actually was trying to kill buddha and he just when he heard the buddha's words that angulimal i have stopped when will you stop and he got you know enlightened and he got you know in, he came into buddha's uh, uh, sangha right so he got transformed so again it's a universal potential it's open for all then buddha another unique thing is buddha's teachings are universal open for both the monks and people who are living a householder life so it's a myth i have made a separate video on myths about buddha's teachings you can check that buddha did not ever say that you have to renounce the world and you have to become a monk or nun to follow my teachings no buddha had the teachings that the buddha the all the teachings four noble truths noble eightfold path impermanence suffering non self all these can be applied both both the monks as well as people who are living in the household life now there are special certain rules for the monastic uh, uh, people who are in the monastic order there is some certain special rules for them but the teachings are there, and even there are cert certain special teachings buddha gave for householders like how to do your job giving a uh, husband wife relationship all those teach things buddha has given so they he has given teaching for both type of people then scientific buddha's religion is totally scientific or you can say a doctor right what a doctor does doctor first says what is the problem right what how the problem is created how we can put end to the problem and the way to the putting the end of the particular disease right the medicine so in the noble truths it's the same thing Uh, the the uh, suffering noble truth number 1 arising of suffering how, cause of suffering third is cessation of suffering that the suffering can be controlled can be uh, eliminated fourth is the way to uh, way for cessation of suffering okay the path that leads to cessation of suffering so it's like very scientific even like the if you see the buddha's teaching on the five aggregates that means there is no independent self the self that you think independent is there permanent is there it's also changing like see my mind what kind of emotions feelings thoughts i had like maybe like one hour back and now everything is changing within me my body is changing i can look at my 20 year photo 20 year back a photo and i was totally looking different and now i am looking different so this is how we realize that we it's everything is changing when there is no permanent self when there is no permanent abhinav what have what has abhinav to fear what has abhinav to be anxious about this are all just changing things are changing right so it's very very scientific and precise then meaning of nirvana in buddhism the meaning of nirvana is not like some heaven right that you know you get a very heaven and all the luxuries and all it is basically freedom from suffering permanent freedom from suffering not temporary freedom permanent freedom right and that is the goal of the entire buddha's teaching it's nirvana means i can be in this reality exist in this reality and i have achieved nirvana i can be a buddha right now it's not that you die and then you go to a heaven and then in the heaven that is like a place where you know the people who go to nirvana they go to into that place no it's not like that it's basically being in this moment and being having the right view to see things that are impermanent and not having the craving and totally being free of the craving and which is basically nirvana the idea of nirvana that is there in the buddhism so this is again a unique point so i have made a, 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 like some points i hope uh, they were useful any questions any doubts you have do feel free to put in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video thank you god